Biuji Sao or Biu Sao in Wing Chun is uh, also another important technique. It comes up a couple times in the Wing Chun system. Uh, you actually have it as early as the Siunum Tao form. Uh, you have the double Biuji Sao in the fourth set of the Siunum Tao form. But when we're normally talking about the Biuji Sao itself, normally we refer to the version that comes in the Biuji form. And that is done a little bit differently than the way it's done in the Siunum Tao form. Uh, first of all, everything at the Siunum Tao and Chamkyu level, or I should say most things at the Siunum Tao and Chamkyu level, operate coming from the center. That's why we have uh, a model in Wing Chun, which is Kun Yao, some fat, which means fist comes from the heart, all right? And, and that means that everything is coming from the center. It also means that when you fight, you fight with your heart. Well, at the Buji level, uh, sometimes we get in a situation where we can't always go down the center or we're not able to. Uh, or for example, we're fighting another Wing Chun person who very strongly occupies the center and we need we need an edge, we need something that can, can give us an advantage over somebody who's using similar techniques against ourselves. So the the Buji movement, all right, actually starts from the side here. You see some people, they practice the Buji here in the center, but the concept is not much different from Siunum Tao and Chamkyu. All right, actually the Buji should be parked underneath your tricep behind your elbow. So if I were to take away this arm, you would actually see that this goes to the side. And this is because it gives me a spatial advantage over the Siunum Tao and Chamkyu wedge format. All right, if somebody gives me a punch, all right, and when you learn Siunum Tao and Chamkyu, normally your idea is to go forward and send your hand forward like this. This wedge here can protect anything that comes on this side. But if his arm is a little bit off to the side, all right, I usually have to switch hands or I have to use my backup arm to protect. The nice thing about the Buji, because it comes from the side here, is that it completely wipes the slate clean to the center. Instead of going from the middle to the end point here, I go from the side to the center, and I actually cover this entire space with one movement instead of needing a backup hand to cover the inside space here. So Buji is much safer because it covers a, a wider swath of territory. So for example, if he fires a punch at me and I'm caught off guard, I can just shoot this one in here, and then after that I can go and follow up with anything I want. Um, Buji is not primarily used as an eye strike. It can be used as an eye strike, normally accidentally, and I wouldn't suggest that you actually use the fingertips to, to strike somebody on the head. Uh, there are some people that use Buji as like a, a striking technique to the head. My, my, uh, uh, fear about that is that when I'm sending my hands towards my opponent's head is he's ducking his head down and I'm going to end up crashing on the top of his head. There's much more solid and standard ways to hit somebody in the face than necessarily using your fingers in an outstretched kind of way uh, and especially under the adrenaline of a fight and the fear that you have in the, the kind of fr frantic pace uh, it's not necessarily easy to do something like this. So Buji is more of a defensive or clearing technique which can also be used to attack but it's not necessarily an eye strike as many people tout it to be.